it's Coach Reese. Today we're going to talk about the discriminant and solving quadratic equations with quadratic formula. Okay. First, the discriminant. We have a formula for the discriminant. We're going to say b squared minus 4 times a times c. That's your value. That's how you're going to find the value of your discriminant. Okay. So if we look at the first problem, okay. Let me bring that formula down again so you can see it. b squared minus 4ac. If you do not have your equation equal to zero, we will move things to all on one side to where we equal zero, but you have to have it equal to zero to get started. All right, we want to identify, this is my a value, this is my b value, this is my c value. So we're going to substitute these values into this formula, okay? B, my B is negative 10. I'm going to put it in my parentheses and square it. Be careful because if you don't put it in your parentheses to square it, your calculator, if you need help, won't go a negative times a negative is a positive. So make sure you put it in parentheses. So that's B squared minus 4 times a is negative 3 times C is another negative 3, okay? So we're going to take care of my exponent, and then this is all multiplication, okay? That's all multiplication. Negative 10 times negative 10 is going to be a positive 100. Sometimes my students get in a hurry, and they try to do subtraction, but this is multiplication, and the order of operations tells us that we need to do multiplication before subtraction. So please make sure you group this and take care of all your multiplication first. So we're going to say negative 4 times negative 3 is a positive 12 times negative 3 is going to give us a negative 36. 100 minus 36 is 64. There's my answer, 64. Not that hard. Okay, let's go to another problem. So we're going to identify this is my A, this is my B, this is my C. We're going to say B squared minus 4AC. So we're going to say 4 squared minus 4 times A, which is a negative 10, times C, which is a negative 4. Alright, so remember, we're going to group these together. We're going to make sure we take care of all that multiplication together. 4 times 4, 4 squared, 4 times 4 is going to be 16. And then we're going to go negative 4 times negative 10. Negative 4 times negative 10 is a positive 40 times negative 4. And when I go 40 times negative 4, that's going to give me a negative 160. When I go 16 minus 160, that's going to leave me with a negative 144. That is the value of the discriminant. Okay? Keep going down. One more problem. Oh, a little too much. Here we go. Notice that we do not have it equal to zero. I don't have a zero right here. We need to move the three. So we're going to move the three to the other side. We're going to say plus three, plus three. I will bring this down. That will be negative three r squared minus six r. Negative six plus three is a negative three, and that equals zero. That's what the equation needs to look like. All right, so we identify this. This is my A, this is my B, this is my C, okay? We're going to say back into the formula of B squared minus 4AC. So when I square this, I'm going to go negative, that's my B, negative 6 squared minus 4 times A, which is negative 3, times C, which is another negative 3. So we're going to multiply. 
or excuse me, we're going to square, we're going to say negative 6 times negative 6 is a positive 36. Make sure that you do all your multiplication at one time. Get that multiplication taken care of, okay? Negative 4 times negative 3 is a positive 12 times negative 3. That will give me a negative 36, okay? 36 by uh, minus 36 is a zero. There's your value of your discriminant, okay? All right, as we keep going, they're gonna ask us to state the number and type of solutions. How do we state the number and type of solutions? Look what it says. When we do our discriminant, when we find our discriminant using this formula, if it is equal, if it is equal to a positive number, we will get two real solutions. If our discriminant is equal to a negative number, we will have two imaginary solutions. And if my discriminant is equal to zero, I will have one real solution. Okay? So as we go back and we look at it, my answer was a positive 64. So this means I will have two real solutions. This one, the next one we did, we ended up with a negative 144. This would be classified as two imaginary solutions. That's the number, the number is two, that's how many, and the type is imaginary solutions, two imaginary solutions. And then the last one we did, we worked the problem, and we found out that we got a zero, and that would be one real solution. So what did we do? We found the discriminant, and now we have decided or determined how to find the number and the type of solutions. Okay, keep moving. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna solve using the quadratic formula. You should have done a little bit of this in algebra one, but here we go, we're gonna do this again. The quadratic formula, the quadratic formula is the opposite, the opposite of B, right? The opposite of B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Does this look familiar? Sure, we just got through doing this. This, this little piece right here is what we did to find the discriminant. There's b squared minus 4ac. That's, we just got through doing that. So we're just gonna do a little bit more than the discriminant, okay? All right, so the first thing we do is, is my equation equal to zero? If it is not, I need to move things so it is equal to zero. All right, so we have a zero. We need to identify our parts. Okay, let me move this just a little bit. Let's go. This is our A, this is our B, this is our C. So we're gonna substitute those values in. We're gonna say the opposite of B, the opposite of seven is negative seven plus or minus the square root. We're gonna take the square root of b squared. What is seven times seven? What's seven squared? That's gonna give us a 49 minus four times a, a is three, times c. My c value is a negative six divided by two times a. My a value is a three, so that's two times three. Remember, this is the key, you need to take care of all your multiplication at one time, okay? Do not try to do some subtraction here. Do your multiplication. Negative four, negative four times three is a negative 12 times a negative six. Negative 12 times negative 6 
is a positive 72. This is going to give us a positive 72. So when we combine this, I'm going to be looking at negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 plus 72. 49 plus 72 is 121 over 2 times 3, which is a 6. All right, we're doing pretty good. We have to either see if that's a perfect square or we may have to simplify it. Not every radical will be a perfect square. Some will have to be simplified and broken down. It turns out that 121 is a perfect square. So this is going to come out to be negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 121 is 11 over 6. Now I have to work this as a positive 11. I have to work this as a negative 11, which means negative 7 plus 11 over 6. And then we have to work it as a minus sign. Negative 7 minus 11 over 6. You see how that works. you got to work it both ways. This is going to give us, let me move this just a little bit, okay? Negative 7 plus 11 is 4 over 6, which is going to reduce to 2 thirds. Negative 7 minus 11 is a negative 18 divided by 6, which is going to give us a negative 3. There's my two answers. Two-thirds and a negative three. All right, let's try Let's keep going. Let's try some more. Number 19, okay? We're going to move the four because we need to get a zero. We're going to say move the four over here. We're going to say plus four, plus four. We're looking at 9a plus, squared, excuse me, plus 12a plus 12 equals zero. We're going to identify this is our A value, this is our B value, this is our C value. The formula says, the formula says the opposite of B, we have, hopefully you have that written on your paper somewhere, but the opposite of B, the opposite of 12 is negative 12. Plus or minus the square root. So we have the opposite of b plus or minus and then it says b squared. What is 12 times 12? Well 12 times 12 is 144 minus 4 times a. a is 9 times c. c is 12. All this is going to be divided by 2 times A. A is 9. Now that's some very pretty big numbers, but we're going to get a, try, a good shot at it, okay? So we're going to have negative 12 plus or minus the square root of 144. We're going to take care of this all at one time. Okay, we got to take care of all of that at one time. So we're going to put that in our calculator. So we go to our calculator and we put it in. Let me show you real quick. I'm sorry, too fast. We know that negative 4 times 9. Negative 4 times 9 is a negative 36 times 12. I've got to go negative 36 times 12. And when I put that in my calculator and I go negative 36 times 12, it's going to be a negative 432. So we go back, and it says this will be a negative 432 over 2 times 9 is 18. But we're not done. I've got to go 144 minus 432. Those are still big, too big a numbers for me to do in my head. So I go in my, on my calculator real quick, and I go 144 minus 432, and it leaves me with a negative 288. So this is going to give me 
Let's move this down a little bit so you can see it better. <coughs> negative 12 plus or minus the square root of negative 288 over 18. Oh, that's a big number still. I have to simplify that. I have to break that down. Okay? So I'm over here, and I'm going to break this down, and I'm going to say that 288, where do we want to go? We're going to go here. We're going to say 288. Well, I know it's a negative. I know this is a negative, so what? When we take the square root of a negative, we will get an I in our answer. We're going to have an imaginary number. But we're breaking down to 288, and that's going to give me 2 times 144. A light just went on. 144. I know what that is. I have learned my perfect squares. I know that 144 is 12 times 12. And when I'm trying to simplify a radical, I am looking for pairs. Here is a pair. I have a pair of 12s, so that's going to let me take out a 12. The 2 is not paired up, is not matched up. It will have to stay inside. So when I simplify this, I'm going to get negative 12 plus or minus, look what I get. The 12 will come out. The 2 will stay inside. But we said that if I have a negative, I'm going to get the letter I. I'm going to have an I right there over 18. So we simplified the 288 to 2 times 144. We knew that that was 12 times 12, and that allowed us to simplify it. But we're not done. We're going to reduce. And here's the rules on reducing. Okay? If you're reducing, look at these numbers that are outside the radical. You remember, you can't, can't reduce if something is inside the radical and something is outside. Those are in two different positions. You can't reduce these. But look at this 12, look at this 12, and look at this 18. All three numbers are outside the radical, so we can reduce those. And the rule is, if you can't reduce everybody, then we don't reduce at all. If only these two numbers would reduce, and this one would not, you cannot reduce. Everyone has to be able to reduce. And it turns out that the number 6, 6 will go into 12, 6 will go into 12, 6 will go into 18. So we're going to reduce, reduce everybody by dividing by 6. So when you divide, you're going to get a negative 2, plus or minus, divide by 6, you get 2i, square roots of 2, and 18 divided by 6 is a 3. That would be your final answer right there. Remember, we're going to have to work on our reducing. It's going to take some practice. This looks a little weird. Okay? Let's do another problem. I don't have a zero. So I'm going to get a zero. I'm going to move my 6B to the other side. I'm going to go minus 6B. Minus 6B. I have 5B squared minus 6B plus 10 equals zero. Okay, now we're in good shape. We identify that this is an A, that this is our B, this is our C. We put it into the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula says we want to take the opposite of B. The opposite of a negative 6 is a positive 6. Plus or minus the square root of B squared. Negative 6 times negative 6 is a positive 36. Remember, anytime you square anything, it'll end up being positive. So negative 6 times negative 6 is a positive 36 minus 4 times A, which is 5, times C, which is 10, over 2 times my A value. My A value is a 5. Please, please, please take care of all your multiplication. Do that all at once. So we're looking at a negative 5, excuse me, negative 4 times 5 is a negative 20 times
times 10. That's going to give me a negative 200. So when we go 36 minus 200, 36 minus 200, I'm going to get 6 plus or minus the square root of a negative 164 over 10 because 36 minus 200 is a negative 164. I've got to break down that number. Let me bring this up a little bit, okay? I have to simplify this number. I do know that this is a negative and I will get an I in my answer, okay? But how do we simplify 164? Well, 164, let's see. We can go to the calculator and we can say menu, number, factor, and we could put in 164, 164, and we could hit enter. And there's my prime factorization. Two to the second power times 41. So back here on our paper, we've used the calculator, and this is gonna give us two times two times 41. Here is a pair, I get to take out a two, the 41 has to stay inside. So when I simplify this, I get six plus or minus, we said what? A two is gonna come out. The 41 will stay inside over 10. But wait, we said that negative sign is going to get us an I because that's an imaginary number. We're gonna get our I right here. Can we reduce? Well, if we look at it, okay, if we look at it, 6, 2, and 10. Is there a number that goes into all three of those? And you would say yes. The number 2 goes into all three of these. Let me bump this just a little bit so you can see it. So we're going to divide by 2. We divide by 2 and we get 3, plus or minus. We divide by two and that's going to cancel and leave us with an I. Square roots of 41. And we divide by two and we get a five. There is my final answer. Three plus or minus I square roots of 41 over five. Now, most of this kind of familiar because you've done this qu the quadratic formula when you did algebra one, but you haven't done quite the big numbers, quite the simplifying, and you sure haven't done the ones with imaginary numbers, okay? It's gonna take a little practice. Make sure your equation equals zero. Make sure you take care of all your multiplication like we've been saying. Make sure you don't try to sneak in a subtraction. Do your multiplication first, okay? Hey, if you get stuck, let us know. Email us, join us in the Zoom. Please let us help you. Good luck.